Welcome to our training video showing a A951 installation from start to finish. Here we are unboxing the A951. Inside you'll find the two templates for mounting the operator including the arms and the mounting accessories. Please note that you do not get any mounting screws to your surface you're mounting it to. This is the articulated push arm that we are going to be using. First, need to get the relevant template out of the box. So I'm securing it using some tape. I need to make sure that it is level. The hinge point needs to line up with the hinge point of the door. And the black line that you can see there is the top line of the door itself. So use something to mark the holes that you're going to be using for mounting. There are nine mounting holes. On my particular case, I'm only going to be using two of each one. Again, make sure that the hinge points line up. This is if you're doing it via measurement wise instead, in case it is a bit of difficulty in trying to get those dimensions all to match up, depending on your arc tray for what you've got attached to it. So it's simply a case of tape measure out and making those measurements as I'm showing here. Now that you've got your holes marked up, use the template and your securing screws. You have to use screws that are appropriate for where you're fixing it to. In this particular case, I'm using self-driving wood screws. You need to make sure to allow space for the cable entry to come in. So my cable entry comes in on my left-hand side. Before mounting, the operator feeds your power cables and the trigger cables through first. There are then five bolts to secure the operator to its mounting plate. I suggest using the middle one first, the one by itself, and then securing the other four. Please note that the one in by itself is slightly shorter than the others. Use your manual to connect your wire up your mains power. Obviously, making sure that it is disabled at the fuse spur with the fuse taken out. Once you've made your terminal connections, put a manual. There is a little cap that goes over the top to keep it safe. You can then secure the first part of the articulated push arm, which we're using here. Obviously make sure that it is level. You would have used either the template to mark those holes, or you would have used measurements taken from the template instead. My particular one requires a use of an extension. So you take your extension pieces and you use the parts that are required. This is an example of a single extension. Secure it with the bolt provided. There are two, one for a single extension and one for a longer one. Tighten it, but do not over tighten the screw. It is pre-locked tighter, so it does not require over tightening. A simple nip up would be sufficient. Then the two parts of the arms are attached together. There are two bolt head screws that secure it from above, so they're not seen. I would always recommend to use the two outer fixing holes. And once they are in the right place, tighten up. Check that the door movement is correct and the arm is not going too straight. When it's in a fully open position, the arm should always have a kink. If it is too straight, it might not function correctly. It could go over itself as shown here. If it is too straight, then adjust accordingly. You can move the screws that are holding it, loosen them off, and move the arm backwards a little bit. And test again. As you can see, there is now a more pronounced kink in the arm, so it's no longer as straight as it was before. Once you've got that in place, you can power off the board and put the plastic cover on. The board will always display LO on it. We are now 
following the quick guide supplied. So the F button is a function press. You have to hold it. It tells you the function when you release it, it goes into the parameter. So if I hold it again, you'll see AT for arm type. Let go, it gives me a one. In this particular case, I need to change this to two because it's an articulated arm. If this was a slide arm, I would have left it on one. The next function I press is a push and go, pause time, pause time push and go, pause time night, closing speed, opening speed, deceleration. If it's only yes, it will record the changes. If you change that to no, that would have not recorded it. We can now go through the setup. There are no further settings that are required straight out of the board. But we need to go to advanced menu. So you need to hold the F button first, then press plus at the same time. You should see S1. Let go of both, and it'll go into that menu. You can now scroll through the menu, as I'm demonstrating here. As default, you do not need to make any major changes at this stage. But we are looking for TL, Tango Knee, which is the time learning. Once you are in the time learning parameter, we are then able to run a setup on the door. The door does need a physical stop, something for it to stop against both in the closed position and in the open position. Once you are ready, you can run the time learning, which is done by holding the plus and the minus both together at the same time. It takes a promise in three to four seconds. The TL will start flashing and then you go to LO and it will switch automatically to L1. L1 the door should be closing. The door will close to its fully closed position. Stay there for a second or two and then the display will switch to L2. When it's on the L2 the door was now moving slowly to find its open position. You need to have a physical stop or something in the open position. With the A951 that could be as simple as you stop it with your toolbox or your foot but you do need something for it to stop against. We recommend a physical stop being used. The display would change from L2 to O5 and the door will close itself. The display will then change 00, 0 to signify that the setup has been complete. This is where we can adjust the closing speeds, opening speeds and the pause time and wire in a opening command as shown in the quick start guide. So the opening command, I'm using a remote button for the moment for demonstration purposes wired across the common and input one and then this is pre-configured to be an opening command so when I trigger it the display will change to zero 01 for opening it will move to its open position say zero 03 which is pause and then it'll, the pause time will finish and it will start closing on 05. I recommend you now use this to adjust our parameters so again use the function button That's the pause time, it's set to two seconds at the moment, so I can adjust if I wanted to. I can adjust the closing speed, which is currently at three, or the opening speed at 10, and exit the programming. So going through the menu, we can adjust settings. So default, arm type, push and go, pause time. So in here, this is where you adjust your automatic pause time. Currently, it's set at two seconds. This can go up or down. I've adjusted just three seconds. Now we have closing speed. So this is where you adjust the speed of the door closing. So at this point, I'm gonna just bring it down to two. It goes from one to 10. And this is our opening speed, which is currently set at 10. So I'm gonna slow the door down a bit, it's too fast. So I'm going to bring the speed down to 2, so we're going to set up into low energy mode. Once you've gone through to the ST, you see the Y, so you can save the changes, press F again, and then you can test your door operation. So 
and now you can see the door opens much slower and will stay open for a little bit longer than before and will now close a bit slower than before as well. As this door is going to be fitted uh, without sensors, it's being specced for low energy. To run the doors faster, you will need to fit some safety sensors. The next step is to connect the external trigger. So I remove my temporary commands and I'll wire the, the trigger. In this particular case, it is from our toilet door pack. Make sure you put the little clips into place to secure the cables and put the cover over the top. Put the little plastic cap on the top just to heaten up the install and there's a matching one that goes underneath that covers the rear of the push arm. Once all the caps are in, we can now test the door using the outside. So we are now using the wave sensors for the Tora Tor Pack. Check that the door moves smoothly and nicely. You can now check for any ongoing further hazards. So although the store is set up in low energy mode, so it is compliant, there is still the remaining hazard of the finger traps. There's a finger trap hazard on the outside and there's also a finger trap hazard on the inside of the door. In this case, we have fitted finger guards, both internally and externally, to protect the areas to prevent somebody putting their fingers into the zone. And check the door works correctly. Mm -hmm.